Mark Ruba in the News 8 studio. Good afternoon. A Rochester Mayor Lovely Warren is conducting a Zoom meeting with the latest on COVID-19 and specifically city employee personnel. And we take you to the mayor now. First and foremost, we must maintain public safety. I was on a call last week where the council president asked me about this question. She said, when you prioritize layoffs, what will you prioritize first? And I said, the first thing that we must do above all is protect the public. The revenue losses from our sales tax as well as state aid will be significant and they remain unknown at this time. Although we are hopeful that our federal and state governments will step up to help cities, we don't know if they'll be able to do so. I wanna thank Senator Schumer for his advocacy and for leading the way, as well as those members of our federal delegation that have helped us thus far. We truly appreciate it. But we in the city of Rochester cannot wait, and we have to be sure that we live with and a means to protect our community and its taxpayers. That is why today I'm announcing that we will be having 403 personnel reductions. This includes 178 furloughs, 208 job shares, and 17 separations. These personnel reductions will go into effect on Monday, May 11th. Notifications to the affected employees began earlier today. These changes will generate over $2.1 million in savings in the current year and in the next fiscal year, allowing us to ensure that not only our uniformed police, fire, and 911 employees are protected and available to continue to serve our community, but critical services like refuge, water and environmental service workers and our drives workers that are on the front lines distributing food will be able to do so and remain doing, doing so. I also want to note that the mayor's office is leading from the front. During this, these difficult times, 25 members of my office, the mayor's office staff, will be affected. Importantly, all furloughed and job sharing employees will retain their health care benefits for the duration of these changes. Separated employees will receive nine months of health care benefits after their last date of employment. I think this is very important to note. Nearly all furloughed or job share affected employees will be made whole financially during this period because of the CARES Act. I don't make today's decision lightly. I value every one of our employees and the work that they do for our citizens and for all of us. However, we must act now to lessen the impact of this crisis on our community. Unfortunately, Rochester is not alone in making these difficult decisions. Nearly 60% of the cities across our nation are making personnel cuts due to this crisis, according to the National League of Cities. Cities like Detroit, Cincinnati, Miami Beach, San Antonio, Dayton, and that list goes on. Our city's challenge is America's challenge. It is my sincere hope that our federal and state leaders act to provide needed resources to our local governments so that we can continue to provide the vital services that we need to provide to our residents. As I said earlier, I am grateful to Senator Schumer who continues to lead this fight. And we have all been advocating alongside him to make sure that our cities get the resources that they need. I know that Senator Gillibrand, as well as our members of Congress, 
have also joined us in this fight. Cities like Rochester are funded three ways, through sales tax, property tax, and state aid. And this is our dilemma. The governor has made it clear that state aid reductions are imminent and the pause has dramatically impacted our sales tax. A three-leg stool does not work well on only one leg. So clearly, we face a significant and obvious challenge, again, like cities across New York and America. I cannot stress enough that our federal government must step up to assist cities like Rochester that are on the front lines in helping our citizens to overcome this crisis, providing critical services like police, fire, 911, food and refuse collection. Together, we can and will continue to protect our community. However, it must be a shared effort at every level of government. With that, our budget director, Chris Wagner, and our HR director, Tassie Demps, are both on the call as well, and we are available to answer any questions that you may have. Thank you, and God bless. Thank you, Mayor. First question is going to come from Raven Brown at Channel 10. Raven. Hello. Hey, how difficult was this decision for you and your office um, to have to notify these families? It was very difficult because one of the things that we don't know is when it's going to end. And so, of course, our employees that are being furloughed and those that are working under job share um, want to make sure that they will continue to remain in city employment during this time. And they asked the question of when will it end, and we can't tell them that at this point in time. And so for us, it's very hard because we know we have to continue to provide the essential services to the residents of the city of Rochester, but we must do so in a fiscally sound way, and this is the best way that we know how to do it. And my follow-up, um, so why is it, you know, just so important for people to understand that while this is hard, this needs to go to the, this is important for essential services, like you said. Um, it is important for essential services because, you know, 911, um, they're answering the phone calls of residents. Um, you know that when a resident calls, they want to make sure that a police officer or a firefighter shows up. We've had uh, last week, in the last two weeks, we had a number of fires. As you know, we are tracking our crime numbers here in the city as well. Um, and when people put out the refuge, they want to make sure that someone is coming to pick up their trash. And this was a way for us to continue to allow our employees to remain whole because of the CARES Act. When those furlough workers go on unemployment or those work share workers go on unemployment, they will um, be basically, or in some cases, receive more dollars. Um, than um, when they were working. And so this was a way to allow our, our employees to remain whole, but also to help lessen the blow to the city's overall budget and allow us to continue to provide for essential services like police and fire. Thank you. Our next question will come from Atia Collins at Channel 8. Atia? Um, hi, Mayor Warren. Thank you. I wanted to talk about how beneficial it is for these employees to be uh, let go now and how they're still able to access benefits such as employment and health insurance like you mentioned. So, so we made a decision to uh, do this now because the CARES Act runs all the way to July 29th and for them to be able to take um, advantage of that as many weeks um, as possible um, so they could be made whole during this time. Um, additionally, continuing to make sure that they are covered under health care was very important for us because we do also know that there's a pandemic going on and if them or their families need to access the health care system, we don't want them to have to worry about the health care bill, bill during this process. And then just a brief follow-up, you talked about how your uh, mayor's staff will also receive some reductions. Did you look at making cuts anywhere else besides city personnel? 
I, I don't understand the question. Was there any uh, was there any conversation about um, finding savings in any other departments besides cutting um, workers or city personnel? Um, our employees are our highest cost, and um, this was a way to allow for our employees to be made whole during this process while I'm um, going either on job share or being furloughed. Um, so this was, according to our budget director and um, our HR director, the best way for us to move forward, to continue to be able to apply uh, to uh, keep those essential services going for our 911 police officers, firefighters, and of course, our DES workers and drive workers. Mayor, this is Chris. I'd like to just follow up and add to that. Um, this is, you know, the best course of action now. But you know, the mayor, you know, acted early on here back in April. Um, we locked down some discretionary spending across the board in other departments, the tune of about fourteen million dollars. So that action had already been taken. Uh, the actions were taken today. Uh, are additional actions above and beyond that, as the mayor said, to help protect the city finances. But certainly, there will be other reductions moving forward. Uh, and departments have been asked to come up with more reductions as part of the budget that the mayor will roll out May 15th. Thank you, Chris. Um, our next question will come from Patty Singer, the Minority Reporter. Patty. Hi, thank you. Uh, we, can you give examples of where these job reductions, furloughs, and sharings are? What departments, so the community knows what is considered, um, you know, I hate to say anything's non-essential now, everything is essential, but where, where have you made these reductions? Um, I will turn that over to our HR director, Tassie Dibbs, to talk about exactly which departments, but early on, we um, were we went through a list of what was uh, what we considered to be essential employees versus non-essential employees. We had to do that to comply with some of the federal and state regulations that were coming down. Based off of that list, uh, we were able to pare down where we could actually furlough and job share a number of employees, and that was across the city. Um, except for in uh, uniformed um, services. And so, uh, Tass, you want to take that specific question, um, please do so now. So for our shared work program, as the mayor identified, we use the process of working with our department's directors and commissioners to identify for shared work specifically. It ranged from uh, administration through Department of Environmental Services, Department of Recreation and Youth Services, our library, our um, civilian in um, Rochester Police Department. For furlough personnel, again, also working with the departments, we identified across those same, um, those same departments, just would add a couple that would be our information technology and our neighborhood and business development. So this, as the mayor identified, was a process where we worked with those department leaders to identify um, the best uh, approach in looking at furlough personnel, as well as looking at the shared work opportunity. Um, I've sort of got a two for follow-up. So there were some positions eliminated. Where would those have been? And also, at what point do we get to where you have to go into public safety, where you have to go into refuge collection, things that really are the safety and the quality, true quality of life in the city? So at this point, Go ahead, Tessie. So the positions that we looked at for separation were in the areas of um, direct recreation and youth services, finance, Department of Environmental Services, and civilian personnel in the department of, um, in our Rochester Police Department. Not non-uniformed uh, personnel. Um, to answer your question more specifically, um, Patty, um, at this point in time, as we prepare our budget uh, for next year, as many people uh, know on this call, the city's budget cycle is from July 1st to June 30th. And so on May 15th, I will be presenting our budget to city council and they will be going through the process of reviewing. Um, right now, we're trying to preserve as many of our uniformed uh, police 
fire and 911 and DES workers, essential service workers um, currently. And the reason why we're doing this is because it can and it will help us in our next year's budget uh, to be able to continue to provide those services. Uh, right now, we do not anticipate that there will be mass reductions in those departments, but our budget, of course, is changing uh, daily as we get updates, and we will hopefully have uh, some final numbers uh, available. Well, we definitely will have final numbers available for City Council by May 15th when we have to present to them a balanced budget. Thank you. Our next question will come from Alex Creighton at WXXI. Alex? Oh, there we go. Okay. Hi, Mayor. Um, just wondering about, you know, the cuts, 25 cuts in your, your staff. How will that impact your ability to govern or lead the city going forward? So um, we have one separation and we have 25, uh, 24 members that are going on to uh, job share. And so um, we have worked with our uh, managers to be able to alleviate any changes to be able to provide services to our constituents during this time uh, based on how uh, these individuals will be scheduled. Um, we believe that we will continue to be able to provide exceptional service with the job share program. Um, and then the one separation um, is something that, you know, we had to, of course, do uh, to work with of, across the board, our departments. Um, I can't ask our departments and our businesses to make uh, the sacrifices that we were also not willing to make in the mayor's office. This is a shared um, uh, problem that um, was made across the board, and we're going to continue to look for, as our budget director indicated, efficiencies. Um, that we can make besides um, cutting or um, furloughing employees. Uh, we did that early on um, over when this first started a month ago. Uh, that was able to yield us about $14 million that we will be um, looking for pushing into the next budget. But of course, we still have our challenges that are facing us. And as I indicated in my remarks, the three-legged stool, meaning sales tax, as well as, uh, you know, AMAID, uh, we don't know what we'll be receiving, and we know that they will all be significantly impacted. I also want to note that we are still under state mandate to provide $119.1 million to our school district. And so um, that is a, a state mandate that we have to comply with and we will comply with in the next budget year. Alex, do you have a follow-up? Unmuting is difficult. Uh, no, I do not have one. Thank you. Okay, with, um, with that, we'll go to 13 WAM News. Um, or somebody from 13, please. Thank you. Hi, good afternoon, Mayor. Um, my question is, um, obviously, you mentioned um, already a few of the departments where you guys have already cut. Um, is, I guess the big question is, you know, is this it? Are you guys expecting to make more cuts down the line? Since we don't know how long this is going to last, are we expected to, are you guys anticipating more cuts could be made in the upcoming months in those same departments? Um, in all transparency, I, I don't know. And I don't know because we don't know if we are going to get relief from our federal government. We don't know um, if the governor um, and through his leadership and advocacy will be able to, to maintain uh, the aim aid that he is providing to cities. So we are doing this now to lessen the blow coming uh, in the next budget year, as I said, uh, it's different for uh, cities, uh, the big five cities, because of our budget year, uh, which uh, starts July 1, and we will present our budget on May 15th. Um, we will continue to evaluate as we go forward, but our number one um, concern uh, is to make sure that we continue to provide public safety to our residents 
And that is going to be what is at the forefront of our minds as we go through these tough fiscal challenges and as we evaluate what's yet to come. Do we have a follow-up from Channel 13? Uh, no follow-up. Thank you so much. All right. Our next question will come from John at Spectrum, Spectrum News. Sorry, I just had to, uh, Do we have a question from Spectrum? I don't have anything. Uh, yes, can you hear me? You can. Yes. Oh, sorry about that. Um, I said I'd unmute myself. Um, just a good afternoon, Mayor. What are some yeah, of the additional things that you're doing to help um, the individuals that were furloughed or laid off? Are there any additional things you guys are doing or support you're giving them? So our HR department, of course, will be working with them to apply for, uh, to show them and get the information for applying for unemployment. And uh, we will continue to make sure that uh, they continue to receive their health care benefits. And for those that will be separated, they will receive, um, you know, uh, health care benefits uh, for up to nine months. Um, and we will continue to make sure that um, we are there to support them during this time of, of change. Um, our hope is that, of course, we know that they will be made whole, given the fact that the CARES Act was able to provide uh, additional $600 on top of what the state provides in um, unemployment benefits. And so um, as we move forward, we'll continue to evaluate and we will continue to advocate for additional resources uh, for our, our, not just our employees, but for our citizens when it comes down to this issue. Um, revenue and uh, the, the hit to revenue for our community is significant. And we need to make sure that we um, evaluate what's happening going forward as it pertains to our budget. And I know that our budget director is, is doing that on a daily basis. And that's why different changes are continuing to come down. But as we move forward, we'll make sure that our employees are, are number one, you know, an essential, um, our, our number one, We, we don't want to have to do this, and um, we don't have a choice at this point in time. Um, it's something that we have to do, but we're going to be there for them, and we're going to make sure that they have health care during this time. All right, thank you. I don't have any follow-up questions. Thank you. Our next question will come from Gino at the City Newspaper. Gino. Hi, how are you doing? Uh, so this is 403 uh, workers that are going to be impacted by this. Do you know what percentage that is of the city's entire employment? How many employees the city actually totally employs? Uh, we have about 3,000 employees. That's including our uniform fire police and 911 employees. Um, Tassie, do you have a specific number? administrative areas but not a specific number um, overall percentage of our administrative and professional it's about six percent of the employees our union personnel is about 14 percent um, and um, our seasonal about eight percent about eight percent This is Chris Wagner. I think in aggregate, it's, it's roughly about 11%, but that's, you know, again, that's a, an, an estimate. Gotcha. Uh, so I, I'm looking forward at the budget season. There's $2.1 million that we're saving here. Do you think that's enough? I need to, I know there's a lot of uncertainty right now where the funding's coming from, where it's going to look like. But do you think it's enough to fill in the gap, I guess? I'll start and then I'll turn it over to our budget director. As, as he indicated earlier, we have done a lot um, when this first started to secure and to uh, maintain uh, and, and hold on to cash. Um, we've stopped a lot of discretionary spending. Actually, we stopped all discretionary spending and really have done everything that we can to tighten our belts. That has saved us about $14 million. Uh, this on top of that will be uh, 
you know, an additional 2.1 million. And Chris, if you want to go into more specifics, I can tell you that um, you'll see in in the budget presentation in the upcoming uh, next week on uh, May uh, 15th uh, to city council, you'll see uh, the detailed changes um, in the next year fiscal year. But Chris. Mm -hmm. Mayor, thanks. Um, yeah, so as the mayor mentioned, the timing of this is, is challenging for a couple of reasons, you know, in, in how our fiscal year works. Um, it's gonna impact our revenues in the fourth quarter of the current year that we're in as well as have an effect on next year's budget. And, and again, a lot of those effects are, you know, at this point unknown. You know, we, we, we know the train's coming, but we don't know exactly how long the train is. Um, and so, you know, what we've done here, in addition to locking down discretionary spending is, uh, we've got $14 million. We've got a hiring freeze in place for, you know, for all non-essential personnel. Uh, and, uh, and we're doing the, the furloughs and, and the other personnel moves today that the mayor has announced. Um, and, and so, you know, we're taking advantage of the aid that, um, the, you know, federal and state governments are giving to us. Um, and as the mayor mentioned, these employees, you know, will be, you know, made, made whole or even, you know, be slightly better off than what they're making uh, when they're working for the city during this, you know, period of, of extended benefits. Um, so, you know, we, again, we've taken, you know, the, we've locked down discretionary spending. We've got a hiring freeze in place. Uh, the mayor, you know, rolled out the capital program, uh, you know, earlier, or actually in the last week, uh, and and that showed, you know, what we were doing in terms of, you know, reductions to cash capital, uh, and and shifting strategy there from you know cash to debt to provide some more flexibility to be able to continue with central projects uh, as, as a way to address some of the shortfall next year, uh, and you know more details around, you know, the mayor's budget proposal for next year will follow on the fifteenth. But those are the, the strategies that you know the mayor you know, has undertaken here to kind of preserve essential services and, and, and provide as much flexibility as we can to deal with what is a dynamic situation. Gotcha. Thank you. Our last set of questions will come from Will Cleveland at the DNC. Will? Am I unmuted? Can you guys hear me? We can. Yes. Perfect. Thank you. I'm. Uh, Getting getting fast forward in my Zoom training because I'm I'm filling in for Brian Sharp who's on furlough this week. Um, so just what what's the message that you can deliver to the city, um, Mayor Warren, just to let them know that that you're trying to do all you can to make sure everyone's being kept whole and 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 things like that. I think that the message is very clear that we are doing everything that we can and have done everything that we can to preserve um, public safety as our number one priority here in the city. Uh, that's first and foremost. The second is we've taken a very strategic look at where we can alleviate some of the stresses on the budget, and meaning that staff that could um, receive uh, and also be made whole by going on furlough or work share, uh, we are allowing them to do that and that is going to save us additional dollars. Uh, we also want everyone to know that we will continue to advocate for additional resources from the federal government and the state government. We will work very, very hard to ensure that the people that do not feel this are, are the people that are our taxpayers um, and that their essential services will continue to be there and remain there when they call. Um, you know, for us, it's how do we maintain exceptional service to our residents, but also uh, make sure that we are fiscally sound as a city. It's very, very important for us to be able to move forward. The one thing that we cannot do is print money. It's not something that we have the luxury of doing. So we have to work within the means that we have. And the means that we have is, as I stated, that three-legged stool. It's our property tax, our sales tax, as well as the revenue that we receive from our state. And we know from the governor's messages on a daily basis that the state has challenges as well. And that's why we are advocating and joining with cities across America and asking for our federal government to help us. We need your help. And this is not about, um, you know, maintaining city government as it pertains to, um, you know, just 
uh, you know, finance or, or, or budgets. We're talking about police officers being able to actually be working. We're talking about firefighters being able to fight fires, 911 operators being able to answer those calls, our DES workers being able to go and pick up refuge. And so we need your help. I join with our mayors across the country in saying that we cannot do this without you. And we're, we're doing everything that we can within our limitation to make sure that we're um, able to provide and continue to buy essential services. And we do not know when this will end. And it's going to get tougher and tougher as the days go by. And so we cannot play politics with the health of our cities. Thank you. Mayor, I'd like to take one more question from Patty Singer at the Minority Reporter, Patty. Thank you, Justin. Um, how were these separations done, uh, being mindful of any union provisions or uh, anything, you know, contractual obligations that you have? What was the, uh, what was, how did that play into how you were making these reductions? Uh, so we notif we've been working with our unions and uh, notify our unit unions that we were going to have to do furloughs. We were hopeful to be able to come to an agreement um, with our unions on uh, some of the changes that we needed to make as it pertains to furloughs. Unfortunately, we were not able to make a, um, a, a, a contract with them. However, because the employees have been made, will be made whole, uh, the damages to the actual employee when we evaluate this with HR and budget in our law department, we found that it was best to go ahead and proceed. We will continue to work with our unions to uh, ensure that we're doing the best that we can uh, by our employees and that thought process of what is the best way to handle this was of course at the first forefront of our minds and only employees that would either be made whole or make additional dollars being furloughed or on job share were um, affected by this except for those that are being separated from employment thank you mayor uh, before we close the press conference are there any additional remarks you'd like to add I'd just like to say that um, this is a very difficult decision. It's a difficult day for all of us. And, you know, I started the day uh, talking to our senior management team, who, of course, uh, did not want to do this. And I, as a mayor, did not want to have to go and look at personnel reductions. Uh, but when we did all that we can on the front end of this to actually uh, rein in discretionary spending and saving the city $14 million, looking at our capital spending budget and um, taking and in, 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 in saving cash um, as best as we can, uh, we, we've done that. This is going to be, there are going to be some hard decisions going forward. So this unfortunately will not end on May 15th or when the city council passes our budget. Uh, the fact of the matter is we will continue to have to evaluate. The one thing that I can assure our citizens of is that we're going to be transparent. We're going to be upfront, but most of all, we're going to be honest with you about what's happening. And I cannot tell you when the end is going to come. I can assure you that you have a team here at city hall that's working across government spectrums to make sure that we not only advocate, but that we tell our representatives what we need in order to continue to provide those essential services to you, our taxpayers. We ask you to continue to listen to our health officials when it comes down to social distancing and protecting our circle. Everybody has a role to play in this. And I cannot stress it enough that the role that we must play is to continue to protect our circle and to stop the spread of this virus to others. The sooner that we can do that, the better it will be for everyone across the board. Again, I ask 
that you continue to advocate and join with us in advocating with our federal partners for additional resources for cities. What Rochester faced, every city across this nation is facing. As I said, 60% of cities have already taken these steps. And I've spoken with many of those mayors who of course did not want to have to do this. But we are in a situation where we're having to make choices, hard choices, in order to keep our governments going. Public safety is our number one concern. I can assure you that that will be the last thing that we look at when it comes down to making sure that our, uh, em our employees and our citizens are taken care of and cutting their budgets at this point in time. But I want to be very, very clear with you that going forward, we are going to have to, we are going to have to protect each other during this time. The things that I saw this weekend were unacceptable. We have to do what's necessary now in order to ensure that tomorrow will be better. We are doing our best in city government to take the short-term solutions so that we, it does not have long-term effects. But if we do not curve this, we will have to make long-term decisions that will have long-term effects on our residents and our tax taxpayers. We need your help. We cannot do this alone. Thank you. And may God continue to bless our community. Rochester Mayor Lovely Warren concluding her media briefing for the latest on COVID-19. Head to our website, rochesterfirst.com, and follow us on Facebook and Twitter as well.